Good morning, future children. Hello, everyone. I trust you are well. It is another Sunday, and we're going to give God thanks for bringing us through another week. And as we get into our distant learning Sunday school lesson, let's pray first, all right? Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercies, your loving kindness. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for the beautiful sunshine, for the birds, Lord God, that we can hear singing. Father, as we come before you, we ask that you will cleanse us, wash us, purify us, create in us a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within us. Father, we ask, Lord, as we go into your word this morning, that you will be with us. And Father God, that your word will reach many today. Bless each and every one of us. Bless our families, Lord, as we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to get right into some praise and worship because we've got a few things to cover um, before our Sunday school lesson is over. All right? If you like, clap along, sing along, and let's have some fun. We should all know this song. so good he is so awesome we give him all the praise we give him all the glory we thank him for the cross where would we be today without the cross where would we be without his forgiveness where would we be without his love and that's what we're going to be talking about but first I want to greet our Bishop, Bishop Clefren Thompson. Grace, mercy, and peace be on to you, to our First Lady, Lady Corinthia Thompson, to all of the Sunday school teachers, to the children near and far, whenever you're tuning into this lesson, I just want to say hello and Jesus loves you. I also have something very special. Many of us graduated. So if you graduated from kindergarten to grade one, or maybe from grade five to grade six, or possibly from grade eight to grade nine, or if you just moved on to your next class, I just want to say happy graduation. I wish you all the best. I am sure that you guys had a great time, even though it was a distant graduation or virtual graduation. I'm sure you had fun. Unfortunately, you couldn't be with your classmates, but I just want to celebrate you and on your accomplishments. To God be the glory. Well done. We're going to get into our lesson today. I'm going to just read a quick story from our devotional, and it is going to be talking a little bit about the topic that we're going into today. All right. I think I might have lost my page. <sighs> Where are we today? Well, while I'm looking for it, please talk to your neighbor, talk to your elbow partner, and you can ask them how they are doing. You can ask them if they've had a good week, and please make sure you have something to celebrate. We always make sure that 
We want to um, celebrate each other. We always want to make sure that we want to talk about God's goodness as well. So in this time, just take a minute just to tell somebody what God did for you this week. We should always be grateful. We should always have some form of gratitude of thanks. So it's very, very important to always remember to give thanks. All right. My little marker did come out of the book, but I found it. And thank you for your patience. I'm going to be reading a story called Forgiven. Everyone who believes in Jesus will be forgiven. God will forgive his sins through Jesus. Acts 10:43. Have you ever done something that you knew wasn't right? Jamie did. Jamie knew it was against the rules to toss his football in the house, but he did it anyways. Oh no, it hit the wall and crash. Jamie's mother came running into the living room. Jamie, are you okay? Mom, I broke your lamp. I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? Jamie asked. Yes, she said, but there will be consequences for breaking the rules. I'll keep your football for two days. Jamie helped clean up the mess and his mom gave him a big hug. Here's some really great news. No matter how naughty we've been, God will forgive us if we ask him to. And our memory verse is Romans 3, 10, 23. So let's read that together. There is no one righteous, not even one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Hmm, what do you get from this memory verse? It says that there is none that is righteous, not even one. Because we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. The only one that is perfect, the only one that is righteous and has reached that level is Jesus Christ. So that means we've all sinned, that means we've all made mistakes, but we can come to him and we can say, Lord, I'm asking for your forgiveness. Now, I have a few little things to ask. Big sin little sin. Is there really a difference? Hmm. Sin is sin, boys and girls. And at the end of the day, God doesn't weigh sin. Whether it's a big sin, maybe somebody broke the law, we would say that's a big sin. A murder, assault, if somebody hit somebody, we'd say that's a big sin. A little sin, we might say, hmm, I told a lie, or maybe I took my friend's pencil without asking. It's still stealing. So whether the sin is big and people think, oh boy, that's a big sin, or whether the sin is small, like stealing a cookie from the cookie jar, God still looks at sin as sin. And when we sin, we need to remember that there are a few things we can do. We can ask God for forgiveness and the person that we have sinned against, we can also ask them for forgiveness. So let's not look at sin and weigh out, oh, that was a big sin or, oh, my sin was just a little sin. It's okay. No, we need to remember that sin is sin. And there's something that separates us from God. We just spoke about it. Both the little ones and the small ones they separate us from God. Do we want to be separated from God? No way. We want to make sure that we reign with Jesus. We want to make sure that we get to heaven. So if it's a big sin, little sin, guess what? If we do it, not that it's okay, but we can always go to Jesus and we can say, Lord, I have sinned. I'm asking you to help me with this sin. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin and help me not to sin again. That's called repentance. When your heart is truly, truly sorry and you make a turn. So if you were lying, God is not lying. Lord, I repent. 
And repentance brings us into this great refreshing. It makes us feel so great and so awesome. So even if we sin, we can ask God to forgive us. So we don't want to be separated. We don't want, if I rip this paper, it would be separated. It would be split in two. We don't want to be separated from God. I thought of something today. I said, the Bible is kind of like a GPS. It navigates us or it takes us where we want to go. If you're driving with your mom or your dad or a guardian in a vehicle, you might hear, turn left, turn right, make a U-turn, wrong way. And then when you're at your destination, it will let you know you have reached your destination. Well, that's what the Bible is. It's greater than a GPS. The Bible is the word of God that it was inspired by God through men. And guess what? It tells us what to do. It tells us, oh, nope, you can't steal. No killing. No, God doesn't like when we lie. So it gives us directions. And eventually those directions will lead to salvation. It will lead to a time that we will get to be with Jesus in heaven. So if you're wondering, hmm, have I committed a sin? Have I done something that's wrong? Open up your Bible. That's right, because it's your GPS. It's going to navigate you and it's going to take you to the right places. And even if you go off track, it might say recalculating, reroute, stop whatever you're doing and get back on track so we can get to our destination. We spoke about this a little bit. What do we do or what do we need to do when we sin or if we have sinned? What could we do? We know we just need to ask for forgiveness. So we're coming to God and we're saying, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm asking, Lord God, that sin will not be in my heart. Because when we sin, it's really against God that we sin. Sometimes we do things to our brothers and our sisters that aren't right. But it will separate us from God. And we do not want to be separated. So, in conclusion, remember that there's none that's perfect. No, not one, not even one. So don't let anybody tell you, oh, I'm as perfect. Oh, I have no sin. If they say they have no sin, they're actually lying because we have all fallen. We have all come short. But the great news is that we have an advocate. The great news is that we can come to Jesus and we can say, Lord, I've made a mistake and I'm asking you for forgiveness. So at this time, let us just close out in prayer, asking Jesus to cleanse us, asking him just to wash us, asking him to make it all better again as we walk in a new week doing better things and not falling into the sin that we may have been in earlier. All right, so bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We bless you, we honor you. We thank you, Lord God, that we were taught today about sin. Lord God, that we know that we have an advocate even when we do sin. Father God, that we can come to you and that we can ask for forgiveness. Lord, we know that sin separates us from you. And Lord God, it is not your will that any man should perish. Father God, it's not your will, Lord God, that we don't reign with you and that we don't be with you in heaven. So we're asking, Lord God, at this time that you will hide your word, Lord, deep in our heart that we will not sin against you. And Father God, if we fall and if we make a mistake, help us, Lord God, to repent quickly because we know it brings refreshing with you, Lord God. And we want to be refreshed in your word. We want to be refreshed with you, Jesus. So bless us this week, our first week out of school. Cover us, Lord. Remember our parents. Father, we ask, Lord Jesus, that your love will be in our hearts. And Lord God, that we will even learn to forgive those that have hurt us. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in your mighty and in your precious name. Amen. Let us just go out with a song. Happy Sunday, everyone. And have yourself a great week.
your hands, you can dance, you can get up, you can move around as we go into our last song. We're thanking him for his love, we're thanking him for his mercy and his grace once again. Amen. Jesus first with his know for the Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Little ones to him below, they are weak, but, but Jesus he is, is strong. So just yes, remember that Jesus he always, loves me. he always loves us, yes, no matter what. Jesus he still loves you. Yes, Jesus loves and what tells us that? Bible Our Bible tells us. So. so even if we make mistakes, he still loves us. Jesus loves me. He who died On the cross, yeah. want to thank him for his love we thank him for his grace and his mercy we thank him for everything that he has done and most important for his love just remember that this week that jesus loves you have a great week k1 um future children i'm so used to saying k1 because i've done my distance learning as well for school so yes for all of our teachers as well it we still continue but for those that were teaching at the school boards or assisting with children with special needs awesome job well done we've done it another school year have a great and blessed day future bye now